very warm welcome to our first ever live stream Grace Fellowship Church in Balnehinch. It's really good to be among you this morning and we're doing church the same way as we would ever do it before in that everybody's joining together. We've already seen that there are many in our community joining even as far as Papua New Guinea. So Paul and Christine, really good to see that you're joining us uh, and really good to see all the names that are coming on board. So it's great to have the family together. It's also good to know that there are people who are visiting with us today and we want you to know that you can feel free to come and join us whenever you want. We're not going to be stalking you or going after you, but you'll be able to connect with us whenever you want to. My name's Ali and I'm part of the leadership team. I'm one of the pastors in Grace Fellowship Church. We're living in unusual times and so we're having to adapt like so many other churches. And so we're doing this live streaming church. It's the new normal, you might say, for us. Uh, and so this week, we also saw our first live stream prayer meeting, the inter-church prayer meeting. And we had some IT, uh, what will we say, trailblazers like Donald Patterson and Ed and Liz McBriar, who were the first to participate in, in the inter-church prayer meeting. And it was great to be amongst them uh, this week. And so if you want to know how to be part of that, check this week's email. Before we go any further, it's really important to say a very happy Mother's Day. A big shout out to you mothers out there. It makes me sound like a Radio 1 DJ, that. But it's really good uh, that you're amongst us and I really hope that you have a special Mother's Day. We heard in the news yesterday that this will be a Mother's Day like no other because of the whole idea of social distancing, which is so important right now. But we hope that wherever you are and however you're celebrating Mother's Day, whether you're a mother or whether you're one of the women in our church who act as mothers to many of our young people, we want you to know we want to celebrate you today and we wish you a very happy Mother's Day. If you're a son or daughter and you've forgotten about it in your bedroom, this is an opportunity for you to post a happy Mother's Day to your mum and get yourself out of hot water. So we're coming today virtually. Uh, we're coming together virtually, but we're coming to worship God actually. We're coming to hear from him. We expect to hear from him uh, uh, because we come expectantly because he's a good God. We're going to be meeting probably for about 50, 55 minutes. There's going to be plenty of dialogue. Uh, Caitlin will be speaking to us. Malcolm will be speaking to us. And we're really looking forward. Paul will be uh, joining David and Cheryl Bailey. Uh, there'll be no sung worship today. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard Malcolm or Paul sing, but there are good reasons why we're not doing song worship today. And after the church today, we will have tea and coffee. They will be celebrated, uh, the, the mothers will be celebrated by being served by the husbands or by the sons and daughters. Uh, it'll be in your kitchen today, straight after the church. So don't forget about that. It'll be great to see you there. Um, feel free to comment as we go along. We'd really be keen to hear from you, even ask questions, because Paul will be interviewing David and Cheryl Bailey here with us uh, today. Uh, they're they're going to talk to us about the journey that they are on with, uh, they've been on with OM, and also how they're serving local church down in the Republic of Ireland. So it's really good to have them. So feel free to please just post questions, post encouragements, and we'll do our best uh, to get some of them on board. We want to be as interactive as possible. A uh, big shout out to Soul Survivors as well, who are joining us this morning. Uh, we're, we're going to be meeting later on this week in a similar fashion. Uh, looking forward to seeing you then. I wonder how you're feeling today. I uh, wonder whether you're feeling anxious uh, or whether you're feeling hopeful. But it's really good to hold on to the promises of God's word. Psalm 46, we remember, uh, we're reminded, says, God is our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in time of trouble. And so we come today in faith, not in an attitude of fear. And we want to declare that. We want to, we want to be able to say, like the words of Peter in 1 Peter 5, cast all your care on your anxiety on him because he cares for you. So that faith that we are experiencing today, that faith does not lead us to apathy. It leads us to diligence. And I want uh, everybody to know we are being very careful uh, to be distancing ourselves and you'll see that today. Uh, we've washed our hands. Uh, we're not going unnecessarily out. And our meetings this week, will be, they'll be done by Skype. They'll be done by Zoom. They'll be done in different ways. We're taking very seriously the government rec uh, recommendations. So we are physically distancing. And it's not about self-preservation. It's, it's about uh, the fact that we care for the vulnerable in our community. We care for the health service. And we care for the, the people who we interviewed last week who work for the healthcare system. That said... 
we're going to be exploring ways in the coming weeks how we can really support our local community given the constraints that we live under and we're going to be working with other churches and we'll tell you a bit more about that later just before we go on let's let's just have a word of prayer and then we're going to hand over to malcolm let's pray Father, thank you that you're not constrained by technology. You're not constrained by anything because you're a sovereign God. And thank you that we can look to you and we can cast all our anxiety upon you because we know you care for us. So Father, we come expectantly because we know you're a God of grace and we ask you to speak to us and meet us in our point of need for everyone who is joining with us today. Amen. Uh, good morning all. So I just want to echo the uh, welcome that Ali gave. Uh, it's great to be able to meet uh, like this. I'm uh, Malcolm, Malcolm Johnston, and like Ali, I'm part of the leadership team here in Grace Fellowship. So we've all been hit by this blizzard uh, this week. Uh, there's no doubt about it. We're all trying to adjust. Uh, what is life now? Uh, what is life going to become? Uh, but we don't know, uh, but we know that our God hasn't changed and he cannot be shaken and he understands suffering. Uh, so uh, we know that our God is still absolutely rock solid, but it's probably understandably uh, knocked a lot of us off our feet uh, this week. Uh, I wonder how you feel you've been coping uh, with it. Uh, it's been a challenging week, probably like no other. You've probably been understandably preoccupied by uh, all that's been going on this week. Uh, it has truly been monumental uh, with the constant news flow, the constant social media, the constant chatter and discussion uh, about the whole thing as we're just trying to absorb. We've had lots of advice uh, about habits uh, that we need to establish and, and great advice about, about the things that we need to do. Uh, and it's extremely wise because there's no doubt we're in this now for uh, a long haul. But I wonder what you've been thinking about what our spiritual habits are going to need to be. What are habits going to be, be in this blizzard uh, of news flow and uh, anxiety and social media that can be completely all-consuming and understandably very unsettling? We must now, as a community, establish a firm place for each of us to stand we're going to need that firm place to stand, <clears throat> rooted in our God who is absolutely unchangeable, who lives with us and is in us by his Holy Spirit. We are so going to need this firm place to stand as all of this stuff around us will intensify. And so I want to uh, bring to you something, I think I would say it's a strong encouragement from a leadership team that we feel is right for our community right now. I think the things that we'll be thinking about are going to need to keep moving and changing and what we think we need to be saying. But right now, uh, what we feel we need to be saying to the community came from the meditation that we as a leadership team did last Tuesday around Psalm 91. And we think this is these are really important words for us right now uh, in, uh, in Grace Community. And these are the words, Psalm 91. The whole Psalm is absolutely brilliant. Uh, and, and an amazing uh, word for us for right now. But the first two verses are really important for us. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Let me read that again. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And our encouragement for you, and we really want, really want you to think about it, is how can you set habits around this immediately? Don't delay. Habits that will allow you to dwell in the shelter of the Most High habits that will allow you to rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And we really want to encourage you in each day, carve out time to be in peace and quiet, to dwell 
in the shelter of the Most High. One of the Bible translations says, uh, translates that to sit down in God's presence. And we really want to encourage you to carve out time day by day now to sit down in God's presence. What might that look like? Well, maybe morning and evening, at least you're carving out time to be in the Bible, to be in prayer, even to be in silence before God. And even as you walk through the day as well, discipline ourselves to really dwell in the shelter of the Most High, to still the mental chatter. Probably like you find in these days, your minds are going like washing machines all the time. Can we build in habits to still that mental chatter and just to breathe deeply? I find a great habit is that as you breathe in, say something like, Jesus Christ living in me. <sighs> Jesus Christ living in me. Can we learn to breathe deeply? Can we limit our news flow on our messaging flow in the day to maybe the start of the day, the end of the day, and then just keep away from it. Somebody mentioned the idea, why not take Sunday as a Sabbath from all of that social media news and just get it out of our heads, out of our minds. But we've got to put limits around that stuff coming into our minds and our hearts all the time. And while we're tempted to be talking about this all the time, could we turn some of that talking time into praying time together? There are so many things we can be praying about now. Praying for ourselves, our families, the wider communities, people we care about are on the front line, people are at risk. Maybe we can turn more of our chatter time into prayer time. Maybe we can establish habits of praying together in our families, maybe like we've never done before. So what could the habits look like uh, that we need to establish now so that we have this privilege of resting uh, in the shadow of the Almighty, that we're constantly not in the shadow of this blizzard of news and information, but we're in, in resting in the shadow of the Almighty. Our God is sovereign and we can rest into him. So please make commitments about these habits. Take stock regularly of how you're thinking, where your fear and anxiety has gone, and re-establish your habits again and get into the habit of doing it. As life for us in church changes, uh, so how we do community is going to change and our home groups and our small groups are going to become so important for us as in terms of how we do community. And we really want to encourage everybody in Grace to connect with a home group, whether you're in that kind of core of a home group or whether you can be in the cloud of a home group, but please connect with a home group. That's where a lot of our connecting, caring, supporting is going to happen. And I really want to encourage you guys who are home group and small group leaders now we really need you guys to step up as community leaders with the people that are around you. <clears throat> and we're really praying for you. This is an important time. And let's pray for each other constantly. Uh, so many within our community are right on the front line, at risk, working extremely hard. Uh, and we really need you uh, to be praying for these guys. So in conclusion, this is a real spiritual battle for us. Satan absolutely wants us to be preoccupied and gripped with fear and anxiety and looking inward. It is going to be a battle. But resting in the shadow of the Almighty, we breathe again. We can be at rest. We can find God's heart. We can see the people around us and we can rise to this. This will be walking by faith and not by sight for us like never before. And we need to rise to it. So carve out time day by day. Set these habits now. We're going to need them. And as faith rises, we will be light and life and love to the people around us. So let's do this. Let's rise to it. And let's be at rest. Now I want to hand over to Caitlin. So delighted that Caitlin has agreed to uh, be in front of us today. And Caitlin, thank you so much for joining us. Blessings on you. Hello everyone, I'm Caitlin. It is uh, good to be with you all in this strange way. Um, I'm basically going to talk a bit about young people and the effects on them and what we can do basically uh, in this time. 
Um, as you will probably know, all schools have closed because of the coronavirus. Uh, for some, this has just meant that they get a longer break from school, but some, uh, this has meant that they've had their last day of school ever and didn't even realise it. It has created a lot of uncertainty for a lot of young people who are approaching exam times, uh, but are no longer as GCSE and A-level exams have been cancelled. Students uh, that were hoping to pull up their grades in their final exams may not have the opportunity to do so. And all I can say to that is that everyone else at that stage is going through exactly the same thing. No one knows what to do in this situation because it hasn't happened before. Grade boundaries may change, university entry requirements may change. Um, I don't know, uh, but please do not feel that you are left behind. You will be okay. Um, there are so many other circumstances that have been flipped on their head um, and I could be here till the end of this uh, talking about it but um, I would like to say um, about, about what we can do as young people and everyone um, but most importantly social distancing and isolation. Um, I kept struggling to figure out what we can do to help whenever we can't go out and help people um, but social distancing and isolation is incredibly important and um, doing our best to keep uh, to those guidelines. Just because they're your friends doesn't mean they aren't car can't carry the virus. So um, it is important that you stick to these guidelines. Um, we need to take this seriously, but I didn't want to just shout at you and tell you everything that you can't do, but I kind of wanted to talk about a bit about what you can do. So first of all, go for walks. Um, a lot of national trust parks and other forest parks have uh, lifted their parking fees and their entrance fees. So um, go with your family, go for a walk, uh, pack a picnic um, and go for a family day out. Second of all, spend time with your family. For some who are normally at university, have come home, spend that time with your family and maybe some just are always out with your friends and you don't often spend time with your family and um, use this time to spend time building those relationships with your family and spend quality time last night my family made our own quiz so be creative about it and um, so thirdly do not uh, do what you have never had the time for uh, read that book you've always wanted to read learn an instrument do some painting uh, make those TikToks, uh, cook and bake Husbands, build and fix those things your wife's been asking you to do. Um, <laughs> you know, ah, there's no. always those things um, that we haven't had the time for. Um, we all say there are things we wish we could do if we had the time. Now we have the time. Why not use it uh, for good for something that you've always wanted to do? Um, then number four was to spend time with God, as Malcolm said. Um, you, we can use this opportunity uh, to start a plan, do a Bible study, uh, over video call of course and um, spend this time in God's present and um, let's do something with this time that we have get creative there's something out there try something new and um, second of all I wanted to talk a bit about mums today is Mother's Day happy Mother's Day and um, a lot of mums uh, job roles have changed a lot in this time and um, so we want to kind of send out an extra bit of appreciation for you and uh, fathers as, as well but today's for the mums um, so um, life has become a lot more complex as schools are closed uh, many are still in work and have to find other means of childcare and many have become full-time mums without being able to take their children to the cinema or the play park or to see other children um, this also means filling some sort of educational role, whatever that may look like. Um, but we just want to say that you are amazing. And if you're doing what's best for your, the safety of your child and your community in the long run, it is greatly appreciated, even if they don't understand it at the moment. Um, I know it can be difficult to entertain young people and children um, without leaving the house. So, um, and no one could have predicted this, so everyone's trying to figure out as they go. Um, so get creative, do the list of things that I talked about before um, and even ask the, them what they want to do. Um, if you try something that works and goes down well, why not share it with other mums? I'm sure they'd really appreciate um, any help that they can get. And the same goes for education uh, tools. So, um, yeah, I just want to pray then for... Uh, 
for mums and for young people. So uh, let's pray. Uh, thank you, God, for mothers all over the world and their sacrifices they are willing to make for their children. Thank you for all their individual gifts and talents, as well as their perseverance and devotion. I pray that you give each mum strength, strength as they face dif difficult times. Remind them that they can rely on you. May you bless and comfort them and remind us to love and cherish and honour our mothers continually. Father, be with young people who are struggling with the uncertainty of their future. Help them to understand that you've got a plan no matter what. Help them and all of us to make the most of this time in isolation and to continue to follow the guidance given. Amen. <clears throat> Let me just pray for us uh, a little more. Sovereign Lord, we uh, as a community commit ourselves into your hands and we are so thankful that you are the Lord God Almighty. Lord, I commit every member of this uh, Grace Fellowship community to you. Uh, those that are isolated, those that are feeling lonely, uh, we pray for them. I pray, Lord, for uh, the many people across our community who are on the front line at the moment, whose lives and work has just become really intense. We just commit these people into your hands, Lord. Pray they know your peace and we thank you for them. We pray for families, Lord, that have gone into flux. We just commit to you the families of our community. Lord, we know our nation is in turmoil. And we also take time to pray for other nations and people there that we care about uh, who don't have anything like the support and the safety nets that we have, Lord. We are mindful uh, that many nations are struggling right now. So we commit ourselves into your hands, Lord. We are so thankful that you are the Lord God Almighty. And I commit every member of our community into your hands right now, Lord. I pray we'll establish good habits that allow us to stand in a strong place as this thing intensifies. And so that we can be light and life to the people and the communities around us. That they will see and know that you are the Lord. And we pray this in your name, Lord God Almighty. Good morning, everybody. My name is Paul. For those of you who don't know me, I'm one of the pastors at Grace Fellowship, and this is the interactive portion of this morning. Uh, we've heard some great things from Malcolm, Allie, and Caitlin. Thank you so much. And now we're going to introduce to you a couple that don't normally go to Grace because they don't live anywhere near Balna Hinch. Um, David and Cheryl Bailey. So welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. Uh, just so you know, we have people watching, as Ali said, from Papua New Guinea, and we have a crowd watching from Moldova as well, so I think they heard that you guys are on, um, <laughs> and they tuned in from all around the world, but welcome to all those who are gathering with us from Grace, from other churches, from our town, from our area, we're so glad you could be with us. Uh, so please feel free, I have a few questions that we've already set, we've already talked about that I'd like to ask David and Cheryl, but please feel free to ask your own questions. Type them in the Facebook uh, stream, <laughs> and they'll get the, the guys will get them up to me, and we will forward them on. A serious, funny, quirky, throw a left fielder in there. We want your questions, so. Be nice. <laughs> and be nice, yes, exactly. <laughs> so, David and Cheryl, how about you start off by just introducing yourselves, who you are, family, background, where you're maybe originally from, and where you are now. So, yeah, I'm David, this is Cheryl, obviously, and uh, we have three kids, so we have three boys, uh, Elijah, who's nearly nine, we have Gideon, who is four, and we have Seth, who just turned three, so we've got three boys, we're from, originally from Dromore, both of us, uh, and we now live in Ballinslow, so we, we don't live anywhere near here, so we're three hours drive away from Dromore right now. Just... Ballinslow, West, Central, South, Ireland, where is it? So it's about, it's, it's, in, it's in the West, but it's on the East of the, the West, west <laughs> border, just to be really Irish, you know? So if you drew a line straight from Dublin to Galway, uh -huh. we're about two thirds of the way along that line towards Galway. So we're in, yeah. in County Galway, but right on the Eastern border. Yeah, it. just off the motorway, so we're quite easy to get to. Cheryl, where are you originally from? Oh, good question. Um, I've been living in Dromore since I was 13, but I'm a blow-in in terms of Dromore people. Um, so family originally Belfast. Okay, great. And now you are in Ballina Slough. Uh, David and Cheryl have both spent a lot of time around Ballina Hinch. Many of us know them from days gone by on Ballina Hinch. Mm -hmm. But now you are in Ballina Slough. 
working with OM. Mm -hmm. So could you tell us what OM is and tell us a bit of your journey. How did you end up in East, West, Central, <laughs> Norway, <laughs> Ireland? In a town that we'd never heard of. In a town that we never um, heard of. So I suppose we first joined um, OM Ireland um, about eight years ago now. Yeah. Um, and so our purpose for doing that was to come and work at their central headquarters, which is based in County Roscommon, so pretty much Midlands of Ireland. Um, and so we were doing youth work, we were doing practical work around the site. Um, but then this opportunity came about where OM were seeking to go, how do we resource the local church in Ireland? How is best to resource? And I suppose a lot of the church in Ireland are fledgling, they're small, especially when you get out of the major cities. And so OM Ireland were then saying, well, how do we resource those churches? Because a lot of church works the same doesn't matter if you're 600 or 60 people mm -hmm. there's still the pastoral care there's still the preaching there's still this but in the smaller churches one person has many caps mm -hmm. and they're exhausted mm -hmm. and they're tired so om ireland decided the best way to resource was to actually place um, mature workers people with experience long term in those churches mm -hmm. to come alongside and so that project is called the philippian project and okay. um, coming from when we look at Paul's letter to the Philippian church, he talks about a partnership in the gospel. He talks about a kingdom mindset of actually seeing Timothy being sent for their encouragement, Epaphroditus to be sent for their encouragement, but also a giving and a receiving. So there's a real kingdom look at God's church. Um, and so that was OM Ireland's intention was through the Philippian project to place families under the headship and leadership dynamic of the local church and mm. um, but to just serve and bless and to encourage and to teach and to help in many many ways so we mm -hmm. went to Ballinslow which was actually Ballinslow Christian Fellowship was the church we attended on a Sunday and okay. um, so we had a long-term relationship with them um, but we felt the Lord saying yeah go alongside draw alongside the pastor and his wife support them support the vision of the church um, and help them in mm. any way great Oh, it's been fun. Good stuff. <laughs> now, when some people think about getting involved in a church, they think about a building, they think about yeah. whatever the church activity is, the Sunday, the Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. I know you guys have a lot broader perspective in that. So can you tell mm -hmm. us a bit about how you've gotten involved in the church, in the town, in the local area? Yes. Yeah, so when we first came in to BCF, obviously we did slide into those things. We slid into the Bible study and just the structure of the church helping out. But I think... For Cheryl and I, you know, when the first few weeks when we got there, we, we started to say, right, let's just sit down. Let's ask God, you know, what does he want us personally to be doing? Like, how can we affect this time? Mm -hmm. And so for our thing was, like, I really felt the Lord clearly say, you know, I want to weave you into the fabric of your local community, into the local town there in Balance Slow. And for me, like when you think about that, you know, community or every town has this sort of group of people that just make the town work. <laughs> They're the ones that get excited about charity things, fundraising, uh, you know, just bringing community into the town. And so, you know, I really felt that the Lord was saying, you guys, we, you know, I want you to get into that and be woven into that. And so for me, I, I just spent, I'm sure the first few weeks maybe a month or so just walking around meeting people talking to people and then i noticed that you know there's certain charlies and i was bumping into these people that were in the town making it function and so i just got to know them i joined some of their things i helped out in some ways you know uh, fundraising and for me that was brilliant because i you know i was just interacting with these people all the time and one of the things that God had said was, look, you know, people are going to get to know you and then they're going to get to know me. Hmm. And really, we have seen that just develop over, you know, the past few years as we've been in the town. Uh, people have just started connecting with us. We've got them. Now we're in a building. And so we're connecting them with the ministries that are happening there. Uh, so... In Ballinslow, in our local church, there's probably now, how many people go to BCF, Ballinslow? We just had a live yeah. question coming oh. here, so the question was how many Here's people going. attend Ballinslow, and this may be good even to yeah. get a picture of what does the local what church look, look like? like in Ireland yeah. in general? Mm -hmm. So we probably, if you include all the children, 
Um, we probably have about 60 people we yeah. meet on a Sunday and um, we have some visitors every so often um, but you probably have about 60 people coming in uh, to the church and that church when we first arrived and that's four years ago they were meeting in a converted barn on a family's farm and mm -hmm. um, since the beginning of that group um, and then we started to outgrow that which was great and um, so then we moved into first a hotel but then the Lord very miraculously at the end of 2017 told our leadership that there is the old Guinness storehouse in town mm -hmm. and it was up for sale. He told us that we should buy it. And we Guinness had, is good for you. So there so we they go. say, so they say. <laughs> and, uh, so, but we felt the Lord saying we should buy that because he did want to grow his church. Yeah. Um, and, but we had no money. Uh, but miraculously in about four months, the yeah. Lord Brought just undertook everything um, and brought all the money and so that's the building that David's saying that we're in currently and it has over the past year mm -hmm. we have just seen a lot of new faces suddenly there's because the way we're setting up it's not necessarily a church building and um, we actually call it the storehouse obviously because we want mm -hmm. it to be belonging in the community they knew it as the Guinness storehouse and yeah. um, but we obviously have scriptures of the abundance from God's storehouse that we want to bring um, so we call it the storehouse, but it's more acting like a community hub. Mm -hmm. So we have folk who are uh, doing different classes in there. They're renting the building. They're doing different classes. Um, but we also then see more sort of movement as community are welcome. They know it's for them. Um, and so a lot of our ministries just flow from that mm -hmm. of connection to the community who are frequenting the building. Yeah, I think like when we started in Balanaslo, there, you know, in terms of outreach and connecting with the community, you know, the church was already uh, just doing this work out in the green areas. There's this housing estate where we can, you know, meet with children. There's lots of families there. Um, you know, we were doing outreach kids programs on that green. And then since getting our, our building, now, you know, we've done kids programs in the church. Kids are coming into the church. We're building up just that constant connection with them. And uh, one, I just wanted to, to say this, actually, when Cheryl mentioned the storehouse, the canal from Dublin used to bring Guinness right to our back door. And John Wesley used to stand at the back door of our church and preach no to way. the guys that were coming in on the boat. So we're in a really significant yeah, spot. Yeah, yeah. And actually, you know what? In that spot, right there where John Wesley preached, uh, there's it's just full of houses now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and we have really good connection with all the people in those houses. You know? Tell me, because the question just yeah. disappeared. Colin's bringing up other questions here, but I want to get yeah. to Dave Brown's first. He said... Uh, how many people are how, who who are the people that are responding or are any people responding to Jesus? But yeah. I know you told me a story about the food cloud yeah. and the interaction you have with the mm -hmm. community. So who are the people that seem to be engaging with the church? Mm -hmm. Where's the hunger? And tell us a bit about the food cloud. Yeah, so I think we follow the favor of God because God was yeah. leading us to basically the traveling community in Ireland have uh, there's a lot in Balnaslow. Mm -hmm. And uh, what that looks like is they're settled, they're in homes, they've been in homes for, you know, maybe 20 years, I think. And so they're settled, they've still got their Irish culture, their traveler culture. Mm -hmm. And we just, the Lord just kept bringing us in contact with those people. We've built up really good, uh, you know, relationships with them. They're right outside our church. Uh, it's not just the, the travelers, but we've definitely felt a lot of favor there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know when we moved into our building about a year ago, so we've been working on like structure and how do we get this thing right. But one of the things was that, you know, in Ireland, there's a thing called food cloud, which is uh, it's basically Tesco or students from Dublin developed this app. And what they wanted to do was get the, you know, the, the waste food from Tesco to nice charities nice. and nice. other stores like Lidl and Aldi. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, out to people that need it. And so that will go out via charities. Mm -hmm. And so that's why us as a church, we, we became a charity and then we use that. We have an app and we get a message from Tesco, you know, you have 12 baskets. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is we bring that into church uh, on a Wednesday night, you'll, you'll have that, you know, coming in while we're doing our Bible study. And what that looks like is maybe halfway through the Bible study, some of the guys from next door will come in and they'll sit there and they'll be like, you know, you know, they're waiting for food and they're being respectful. They're sitting, yeah, they maybe yeah. make a cup of tea. Yeah. 
but they're you know next thing they're they're reading the bible and they're they're interacting with the study and uh, it's just it's fantastic in that regard you know I was going to say, even some of the fruit, because as you, you kept on saying about the favour, mm. um, so we come from a background of Youth for Christ, drop-in centres, um, sometimes working with not the easiest of children, yeah. um, and yet we had yeah. never seen some of the things we had to go through uh, in terms of the children's and youth ministry. Mm. But I think just our consistency of, we felt the Lord was saying, go there. Mm. And so it was difficult, and we did have altercations and we did have struggles with some of our team going this is not like what I'm used to yeah. and yet pouring out our love consistently I think broke down walls and broke down barriers yeah, um, yeah. and we sort of saw the favour in that community of they do care about us and um, so much so we have had only last month one of the mums of children that have come through our holiday bible clubs and mm -hmm. um, actually she came to a conference that we were running mm -hmm. and she gave her life to the lord there yes. just last yeah, month amazing. and so there's that favor that yeah. we are seeing that is coming from just walking with people consistently yeah. caring but also the food cloud started with come to us we will help you yeah. but on a weekly basis there's a team of folk at the church <laughs> who are in homes they are having cups of tea with folk they're being welcomed into their homes and um, it's led on to ministry with single mums and people, ladies in the church saying, well, here, can I drive your kids to school in the morning so that you can go to a doctor's appointment? It's actually being God's kingdom people wherever we go, really. Yeah, brilliant. And which is difficult and amazing and challenging. Yeah, it, makes it keeps it fun. Just reading the uh, question here from Paul Fleming's come in. How has it been navigating basically the north-south cultural differences? If it's led back enough, Paul. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm so led back. Although when we first moved there, it was like, uh, yeah, it was strange because up in the north, it's like everyone line up. You have your place. You know, we're all ordered and stuff. Yeah. And in the south, it's just in like, the west. yeah, we're just like, hey, just let's have a cup of tea first. <laughs> let's talk about this. We'll yeah. do a bit more. And, you know, and they value relationships and all that interaction. So yeah. I was probably sitting when we first, you know, go, oh, I want to do more, you know, but I think on, I got used to on the leadership team of the church, we're the only people from Northern Ireland. Yeah. Um, and there are, there's a couple of others, um, but there's a good number are Irish. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it's been really interesting. We laugh together mm -hmm. because usually I think I'm the one called out for going, so what's the purpose in that? Um, or yeah. things where people, so in the Irish, even one of the things we probably found the most difficult to navigate was in the Irish language, there are no words for yes or no. So therefore, what we would term waffle and tangents is actually the answer to yeah. your question. So there's yeah. a lot of time. I think that's just been navigating words and I. We're so close friendship mm -hmm. now with so many people. We love them and they laugh alongside us when we're going, right. what was the answer Wait, there? Where, where are we getting here? Yeah, because yeah, we, there'll be a story around it. But no, we yeah. I think living there, and that's maybe what has been beautiful. We were even just reflecting on this a couple of weeks ago together. Mm. The Lord has taught us things that we didn't realize he was teaching us mm -hmm. along the past decade mm -hmm. um, that mm -hmm. actually has prepared us for the next and the yeah. next yeah. and the next, you know. So actually, we're probably not the same as we were a decade ago yeah. when we were coming to Ballon Hinch. And, yeah. and you guys know, like ourselves and many people in the world, that a, the winding road, which we think is going on tangents, is the road mm -hmm. God's taken us on to prepare mm -hmm. us for the next. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, brilliant. Right. Yeah. Tell us a bit about the, the local church. We've gotten a bit of this, but the local church in general in Ireland. Um, what are the, ch as you said, rurally it's a lot smaller. Um, mm -hmm. What would sort of the numbers typically of the local church, West Coast Ireland be? What are the mm -hmm. challenges facing it? And what are the opportunities that the, that mm -hmm. the local church has? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the church typically is small in the West of Ireland. Mm -hmm. So basically where we are, we know every church that there is from Ballinasloe to Sligo or Donegal, uh, right down to Cork. You know, that's just the nature of the church in Ireland. It's small, it's sparsely spread out in the west where we are. You know, we, we could drive 30, 40 minutes before we meet one more uh, group of people that meet and call themselves Christians and are, you know, mm -hmm. uh, worshiping together and serving together. So that is a real picture, you know, as you go out further out into towards County Galway, Clare, there's there's only a few churches in Clare that we know of, uh, and then all the way up to Sligo, there's a few churches in Sligo. So I think the challenge is, you know, there needs to be more happening in those areas. And also the opportunity is, you know, 
people, I've noticed even people in the north over the past four years, have started changing their language about Ireland and their heart for Ireland. And I, I think that's exciting to see why God is raising those people up, why his, they're on his heart, you know, why uh, these towns are on God's heart. And so I think the opportunities for the next five, ten years are amazing. It's just got something in my head, but do you think mm -hmm. that, ch I know there's been a lot that's gone on in all churches that have lost, um, that have caused people to lose faith in the institution of a church. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's in a downward spiral right now in the South, or is there a hunger for something? There's or? definitely a hunger. Mm -hmm. I would say, um, probably even if you look at historically, sort of in the 70s, there was a, sort of a movement of renewal within, even in the institution, where people were coming to Christ, and that sort of led into, in an Irish context, house churches. So yeah. actually, when we're looking at it, we're seeing very small churches. Mm -hmm. I think the people in the 80s are going, wow, yeah. we have buildings now, you know, yeah, what I mean? yeah, it's yeah, literally yeah. getting exciting. And I think that is, we're on an upward curve. It's yeah. really bubbling. I think, especially um, in the West where we see, because we it would be presumptuous to speak on behalf of Dublin or Cork or whatever, where we're not. Mm -hmm. um, and they're definitely in the cities, there's larger gatherings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But where we are, there's, the Irish are very spiritual people. Mm -hmm. And I think as they've become disillusioned with the institution of church, they've actually gone looking into other things. So I think even mm -hmm. traditionally the institution of church would have been hand in hand with probably Celtic paganism and ancestry mm -hmm. and tarot reading and all the, that kind of went hand in hand. Yeah, yeah. And I think as, as they've become disillusioned with institution, they've just thrown themselves into what are our ancestral roots, the Celtic paganism yeah. kind of mm -hmm. thing. So most aren't necessarily going back to the days of St. Patrick, they're going back to the days of wow, Druidism yeah, almost. Yeah. Um, and there's a celebration of that, a real celebration, mm. I suppose, at the moment where we are, Absolutely. where the actual solstice festivals and the four, you know, wow. sort of solstice things of fire and light, which would be pre-Patrick, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that is celebrated. And it's almost mm. like a cultural identity that they're clinging to because they're a very spiritual people. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. But whenever you enter into that mm. and speak the real life-giving words of Christ, mm -hmm. we had one man, and this is why the long journey, one man who we spoke to two years ago, mm -hmm. but only a couple of months ago, came into our church, Bible open, saying, this is true. Why yeah. has no one told me this before? Well, yeah. And I think there's an excitement and a hunger because when they're showing it, yeah. they're like, why didn't you say so? Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's exciting times, I really would definitely is. say. Yeah. Brilliant. That's a great place to end this. <laughs> uh, with, with hope amongst mm -hmm. yeah. the, the recognition that it's challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, but what can we pray for you guys for as we uh, end with the whole community gathering with mm -hmm. us as we... Uh, Go ahead. Go ahead. I would just say pray the reason we're actually up here at the moment was we were pretty tired and yeah. we just wanted mm -hmm. God to build yeah. in mm -hmm. so pray just that God will sustain his people there's a lot going on with very few people doing it literally mm -hmm. the fields are ripe on to harvest and yeah. um, the opportunities that present themselves it's the same people rolling out rolling out rolling out and um, so pray that God will sustain that God will resource and pour out his blessing mm -hmm. for the needs that are bubbling up where we are yeah. um, and I think that would probably be us and the church in general across okay. yeah. oh, and you personally as a family yeah I think just that we can find uh, like Malcolm was talking about those habits those rhythms I think we've been mm -hmm. talking about that for maybe too long <laughs> 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 talking about the rhythms <laughs> we want to find those rhythms yeah. so what Malcolm's saying is it's just resonating with me you know mm -hmm. and I, we personally want to find that as a family and what's yeah. that look like for us in our lives and how to prioritize seeking the presence of god mm -hmm. so yeah, that we yeah. can be keeping in step with his spirit not just doing great ideas yeah the tarasite yeah. but actually god yeah. ideas absolutely great yeah. let me pray for you guys thank you it's great to sit with david and cheryl here and others just remembering we're part of a much bigger church not just in the mm -hmm. south of ireland but in papua new guinea and all around the world so let's pray for you guys and the wider church mm -hmm. Father in heaven, we thank you so much that in this way, again, as we've said before, we can gather. And Holy Spirit, you're not confined to a space or to four walls. You are on the move all over the world. In Balana Hinch and in Balana Slow and in Papua New Guinea and Moldova and all over the world. And God, I thank you for David and Cheryl and for their heart for you. For their heart and that those words to be woven into the fabric of the community you put them in, God. Lord, help them <clears throat> to have the favor to be woven in. Help them to have the confidence 
the space God. Just think of the line that uh, you split the sea so they could walk right through it, God. I pray against just the, the desire to work and to do and to get stuff done. I pray they will do, but I pray they'll do and they'll walk into the spaces that you're opening for them. I pray they'll meet the people that you want them to meet. Um, I pray for humble hearts, God, for them and for the people in their church and their community uh, to be able to speak life with gentleness and respect and hope, the truth of the good news of the life and death and resurrection in their lives, through their lives, gently and humbly with peace and joy to lives around them. God, your king, your king in Balna Hinch, your king in Balna Slow, and I pray for your kingship, your kingdom over them. And God, I pray for them as a family as well, for their three lively, full of life boys. Um, God, may they equally have time to invest in those boys that they may grow up to be servants of you, who love you, who honor you. So we thank you for their time here. We thank you for their encouragement for us. And may you send them out um, back into this time and back into Balan Slow uh, with energy and with vision for the road ahead. Jesus, we pray this in your holy and awesome name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Head off, head off to stage left. <laughs> Being very careful to wait till these guys go away before I join, um, and we are continuing, uh, as I say, to keep to keep distance apart. I really want people to know that that we're taking this really seriously. Uh, according to Kirsty, that was a really good interview, guys. So well done, uh, and we've been hearing from lots of people right across uh, the, the place. It's really uh, encouraging to hear how God is actually at work beyond the borders of Balna Hinch. Imagine that. Uh, so it's great to hear what's happening down there. It's been really good to hear from all you folk throughout the service as well. Uh, lots of likes going in there and lots of comments going in and lots of encouragements coming in. Uh, and people talking about families meeting and, and coming as couples and so forth. Uh, and seeing friends that we haven't seen for a while. Uh, seeing friends from other churches in the town as well. Uh, and we, we want you and the other churches to know we, we're praying for you. We pray for you every week uh, and we love you. Uh, uh, and it's really good to see some of you joining us today. Uh, I noticed at the peak we're sitting about nearly 120 platforms, but that can mean multiplied by two, multiplied by three. So it's really good to see the family connecting at this time. As I said, we're trying to connect uh, at the minute more and we're trying to figure out how we do church. Uh, so bear with us as we do that. I'm going to bring you a few announcements before we bring matters to a close. Uh, home groups, uh, first, first of all, to say we've already mentioned this. Uh, one met this week uh, virtually, and uh, we're really going to hopefully see, as Malcolm mentioned earlier, a real ramping up of that. We really see this as a very, very important part of church right now, uh, and you'll be hearing more about that in the coming days. This Thursday, Soul Survivors will be meeting in this sort of way, but you'll be hearing about uh, that in due course. Uh, we want to stay connected and supporting each other, as I said earlier. So if you're not connected in a home group, we're going to see how we can help you get connected uh, because we're really keen that people aren't isolated uh, uh, at, at this point in time. Next Sunday, uh, we're going to be continuing our series of Exiles. Karen Fulton is going to be uh, sharing with us uh, from Daniel chapter 10 and 11. Uh, looking forward to seeing the questions coming into you, Karen. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a few belters there for you. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, really glad that you're going to be with us. And we'll, 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 um, we'll hear from Karen next week. So just a couple other things to mention before we, before we bring matters to a close. Um, there's a call to prayer today at 7 p.m., for the coronavirus situation. It's a call, there's been other calls at different times and so forth, but this is one that we want to uh, sort of jump in on and be part of. Evangelic Alliance's website gives a lot of details about this, but there are a lot of churches across the British Isles, across the, the water, as well as down south, uh, that are supporting this prayer initiative. Asking people to light a candle, put it in their window this evening at 7 p.m., uh, and then come together as the church across this land, seeking the help of God. Um, the link for, for the Evangelical Alliance will, will be put in the comments, by the way, so you'll, you'll hear more about that and uh, you'll see more about that on the page in due course. 
Uh, We'll be praying that God may have mercy on us, grant us strength and wisdom and help us to be a people of hope. Evangelical Alliance's website, as I say, will have more uh, more, um, details on that in due course. So how are your circumstances today? Are you anxious about your finance? Are you anxious about your health? Are you feeling as if you need others to help you? We really want to know about this because we really want to do something about that. We want to respond biblically because we're reminded what Jesus said. He came to set at liberty those who are oppressed. So we're going to be working with other churches in the town and with community organisations to really get this right, not rush into doing something wrong. We really want to do this for the long haul. And there's going to be more to say about that in due course in the future. Uh, But just to say, right above the page, uh, there is a form that you can click on right above the live stream page. If you look right above us now, you'll see that there's a form that says Grace Fellowship Response Form. If you need help, uh, to, you can, if you need help because you're self-isolating or maybe you need food packages or you need help some way, please do click on that form. It's, 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 uh, it'll only be myself and Paul will see this. Uh, uh, if you need help, we would love to connect with you. Equally, if you want to offer some help uh, by volunteering, by donating, we've heard about the food cloud, you can donate to our local food bank and we're really keen to be excessively generous when we can in this situation. So if you want to uh, offer help in that, then please, that form is your opportunity. Matthew 11 in the message translation says this, Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. Those are the words of Jesus. This crisis presents us, we believe, with opportunity. If you've been living in the fast lane like me and like others, or you've been living on easy street like me sometimes as well, God has certainly got our attention. We want to be careful to listen. So please do look out for each other, look out for your family. Keep connected with the Grace family and let's be light on our front lines wherever we are, in our neighbourhoods, in our streets and in this town. Love them. Uh, So uh, we're we're going to finish. I really want to thank everybody for this experiment. Uh, New for us, thanks for clicking in. Uh, We'll learn a lot from this uh, as well. So thank you all for... Uh, coming in this morning and wherever you are and let me just uh, lead us in prayer as we finish and let's just rest uh, into the shadow of the almighty uh, as we as we finish and let's pause lord we want to be people who dwell in your shelter O lord most high we want to experience that rest that we can find in your shadow lord almighty We will save you, Lord. You are our refuge and our fortress. You are our God. And we will trust in you. Lord, we declare it, just as the psalmist did. And we put ourselves in front of you, Lord. Uh, These are days when we need to stand firmly and walk by faith and not by sight. And so, Lord, strengthen us and help us to establish the habits that we need uh, to put into every day. Uh, to dwell in your shelter so lord i commit all of us into your hands we pray for your hand upon us thank you for your protection i pray for every member of our community lord that we would know the rest and peace of walking with you whenever this chaos is going on around us lord we pray for people who are suffering uh, all across the country all across the nations lord we our hearts go out to them with a deep compassion lord we pray for families and individuals that are suffering. We pray for those that are caring for them. We pray for government uh, when these big days of decision making and fast decision making, Lord, we pray for uh, the people that rule over us. We commit them into your hands. And so, Lord, our confidence is in you. We give you thanks for the amazing possibility of meeting like this. And Lord, I commit to you every person who's listening here online at the moment. May you be their strength. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.